NFL owners and executives met with representatives of the Players Union in New York on Tuesday. They discussed joint action in the wake of controversy from players protesting during the national anthem. Hannah Doba has more. Take a knee, yes, white supremacy. Nearly two dozen protesters took a knee outside of the meeting between the NFL team owners and players in New York. Their players are standing up for the rights of every single American to be able to live freely. Some NFL players have been protesting racial inequality by taking a knee or locking arms during the national anthem. But NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell and some owners believe players should stand. The league and players union issued a statement today saying owners and players had a productive meeting focused on how we can work together to promote positive social change and address inequality in our communities. The ongoing controversy has bothered some fans and President Trump who said players who kneel should be disciplined. Before watching a football game, you want to see those players be proud of their country, respect our country, respect our flag. Despite pressure from the Trump administration, demonstrators here say they hope NFL owners will defend players' rights to protest. We have players using this platform to affect a really important conversation. It's just sort of, it's unprecedented. Former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick originated the protests and has not been picked up by any team this season. On Monday, he filed a grievance against the league, claiming the owners colluded to keep him unemployed. Anna Doba, CBS News, New York. Dana Jacobson joins me now with more on this. So, Dana, what are the main takeaways from Tuesday's owners meeting? Well, it was one of the things that I think some people were expecting because the players have never been there and a part of the players uh, of the owners meetings. Not a lot was done. They met mm -hmm. for a couple of hours. And the biggest takeaway really is that they have gotten away from that anthem conversation. At no point were the players asked to stand or told that they were required to stand because they can't even tell them that even if the owners wanted to. Mm -hmm. But they got to what the heart of this initial protest was, which were social issues. Right. And the league and the players really have both come out and said that they now are committed to moving forward and to working on social issues yeah. together. Roger Goodell, the commissioner, made a very brief statement at the end of some of the meetings today and said that he sees a meeting happening soon, probably within the next two weeks, and was very impressed with the players that they were talking with and their commitment to the community. And this is something everyone, owners, players alike, really can move forward on in making that commitment to their communities. Well, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that moving exactly. forward. Um, in the meantime, Colin Kaepernick filed a grievance against the NFL Sunday saying that the owners are colluding to keep him out of the league. What can we expect from that? Well, collusion is incredibly difficult to prove. And, and obviously, this is out of my expertise. Mm -hmm. This goes into legal expertise. And from an attorney that writes a lot about sports law says that it's going to be an uphill battle for mm. him. I think that the bottom line to remember with this is a lot of people believe, do believe, in the sports world talking to some writers who have covered many teams and many players, that this is collusion. That is what we are seeing here. But that doesn't mean that you can prove it. And it doesn't mean that there'll be an end result that maybe Kaepernick wants, that he'll find his way back into the league, that perhaps this is the idea of when he took that knee last year, he may never have thought of this. Hmm. But this is where they are. And the social issues that he raised are just too much right now for the league to handle. Obviously, the league says it is not collusion. Mm -hmm. That is their stance. And again, it's a legal argument, which is much harder. To prove. Well, how much do you think that President Trump's tweets have influenced the NFL's actions on this issue? I, it's huge. This yeah. was this was really a dead issue in the league. You weren't hearing about who was kneeling or not kneeling right. uh, during anthems until this was raised again. And at the time when it happened, and we saw that weekend of unity, what I said, the, the way I sort of best described it is, it was like, okay, I can pick on my brother, but you can't pick on my mm. brother. So I think when the president went after the NFL, they sort of circled the wagons sure. and took a stance together and now really are focusing again on issues that are so big, Elaine, they can't handle it in a week. We're not going to have an answer to this tomorrow. It's it's much longer as you look at that road ahead. Right. These are issues that are really deeply rooted in our right. society. Well, in a joint statement from the NFL and the Players Union, both sides pledged to meet again to discuss these issues. So what should people focus on as this dialogue continues here? Looking forward. Well, I think some of it is looking even in individual communities. Some of these players have already started going out in communities. Malcolm Jenkins, Chris Long with Philadelphia. We've seen a couple of the players up in Seattle doing the same. Doug Baldwin. We saw a letter yesterday from the commissioner uh, showing support that the NFL is putting its support behind some social justice, some prison reform, some sentencing guidelines. So I think it's watching those little things and watching the players take action in their communities 
And then you'll see if it grows, not just within a few teams, but in all 32 teams in the league. And if you can have an impact, obviously these are NFL players who have huge voices and right. a huge presence, not just players, but the teams as well and the owners. They have big voices and a lot of say and even money behind them. And we'll see if they can make a difference in, as you said, these are not problems that you solve overnight. You don't say overnight, racism is done, sexism is over. These are really big social issues to tackle. All right, we'll continue to watch it. Dana Jacobson, thanks so much, Dana. Thanks.